logic, trying to do uh, uh, an analysis of, of logical uh, laws. Where do the laws come from? James will argue that the laws come from our physiology. So it's, you know, that the logical laws that we think of cognitively are actually based on characteristics of our bodies and the way our bodies behave and, and interact with its environment, with our environment, right? Um, the um, argument they had uh, with um, the Huxleys, uh, most, I guess Thomas Huxley, uh, not Adelis, or however you say that word. Are you familiar with that person? Um, uh, they were uh, involved and enthusiastic about um, uh, um, Charles Darwin's theory and, and, and trying to think of what things will follow from having understood that theory and its application to thought and consciousness. And some of them in England, uh, um, I think it was uh, Herbert, George Herbert, I forget. But in any case, one of them was arguing that we're like automatons. We're like machines, just like Descartes argued uh, that, well, you know, animals like, are like a machine, we're like a machine, and our consciousness is just kind of a superlative uh, uh, traveler in our head that has nothing to do with what we're actually doing. Everything is kind of automatic. Uh, and, and meanwhile, this consciousness is thinking, oh, I'm doing this or I'm doing this, or I'm thinking this, um, but it's not actually affecting our, our behavior. James is going to argue that every aspect of our phenomenal experience is an emotion, and that emotion is part of our consciousness. And our activities are all not deterministic based on this kind of mechanical view of our consciousness, but instead is a real driving freedom that we have to choose. In fact, uh, um, we love Renouvier, uh, a French philosopher, uh, who uh, in reading uh, Renouvier, he gets uh, the interesting line that the first act of freedom I will make is to choose to have free will. Renouvier, let me see if I can remember. Charles Renouvier. By the way, they were friends. Uh, uh, William James and Renouvier not only wrote back and forth to one another, um, there's Swedenborg again, kind of interesting, um, but the uh, um, similarities in their thinking uh, were the same. Um, is this interesting or am I boring you guys to death? I'm boring you to death. I'm writing my paper on determinism and free will. So this is applicable. Oh, oh, applicable. Yeah, oh, I'm, I'm just paying attention while I'm chatting to keep more discord. Oh, well, then so I'll, I'll just keep going and not worry about what you're Yeah, go ahead, man. Go ahead. Okay. Sir, that's <laughs> good. <laughs> um, Renouvier. Do I? Go there from something else that was interesting? Probably. Oh, no. Let's get rid of him. Um, so, the foundation is a behavioral semiotic. A theory of signs is a word's meaning, is its use. How do we use our language in order to accomplish things? As far as James is concerned, it's pretty clear that if we are accepting evolution as a theory, and consciousness is a development. And in fact, when you look at the, the simpler animals, they have consciousness too, but it's not very complex. And as you get a more complex am animal, a mammal, you get more complexity in their consciousness and how they're reacting to their environment. And humans being not only conscious, but also self-conscious and are familiar with the way Hegel and Hegelians were using uh, the concept of, of this dialectical process of, and it's a process. You know, they're not they're not thinking that I have a 
unique individuality that's me and is unchanging. No, uh, I'm a constant physical process. This, this dialectical uh, um, me is constantly experiencing phenomena, and as I'm experiencing the phenomena in a stream of consciousness, so, in fact, we even get uh, the concept of a, a stream of consciousness. That's a William James uh, invention, I believe. But you'll, you'll get uh, artists um, that will start using it. Um, how, how many of you have read anything that was written as a stream of consciousness? Have you had that yet? Yes? Um, let's see. One of, the, one of the ones, I guess, is uh, the sound and the fury, right? Let's just go there. And I want... Too much stuff. That's what I want. Okay, so here we go. Is that large enough for you to read too, or you can do? Oh, I went backwards. Oh, I know what I did. Okay, so this is written with this Jamesian te technique in mind is what the author has tried to do is represent the actual stream of consciousness in the text, right? So through the fence between the curling flower spaces I could see them hitting they were coming toward where the flag was, and I went along the fence. Luster was hunting in the grass by the flower tree. They took the flag out, and they were hitting. Then they put the flag back, and they went to the, ta to the table, and he hit, and the other hit. Then they went on, and I went along the fence. Luster came away from the flower tree, and we went along the fence, and they stopped, and we stopped, and I looked through the fence while Luster was hunting in the grass. Here, Caddy, he hit. They went away across the pasture. I held to the fence and watched them going away. Listen at you now, Luster said. Ain't you something? 33-year-old going on that way after... A, uh, so what's, what's happening here, you'll find out as you read the, the text, that Caddy was the sister of the boy who's like, 33, but he's mentally uh, um, ill or working. I suppose he's, as you would have said, um, retarded at the time. <laughs> um, and so when he hears them hitting Caddy, calling Caddy, they're playing golf, right? And so and they call Caddy, and he's thinking of his sister, who, by the way, at this point has actually died. So he's crying because he's missing his sister. He hit that went. They went that way across the pasture. I held to the fence and watched them going away. Listen at you now, Luster said. Ain't you something 33 years old going on that way after I done went all the way to town to buy you that cake? Hush up that moaning. Ain't you going to help me find that quarter so I can go to that show tonight? They were hitting little across the pasture. I went along the fence to where the flag was. It flapped on the bright grass and the trees. So, so they're trying to write as if every single phenomenal experience that you're having 
is part of the text. And, and if you've ever read like a whole novel like this, Virginia Woolf writes this way, um, To the Lighthouse, I think, was, was one that I read. Um, and it, it hurts your head. Because after a while, reading this, you're walking around thinking, I'm walking on a very flat road and doing that. And I'm, I'm looking at the end. And there's a person actually paying attention in the back. And she's got her hand on it. Every sim single phenomenal incoming sense experience is like, that's part of my stream of consciousness. Not just the concepts that I'm thinking, but all of this experience, which, by the way, is an emotional experience. And, and today, we especially, uh, thanks to this guy, Antonio Damasio, feeling of what happens. So thanks to, uh, you can see he's, he's written other books as well, but in this particular one, the feeling of what happens, body and emotion in the making of consciousness. If you're having an experience, a biochemical reaction is going on in your body, including your mind. There's no point at which you're not having some sort of biochemical event in your brain. So if you're having a conception or an experience, biochemistry is happening. And that's equivalent to emotion today in the sense that uh, um, we now think of it. Remember, at least when I was a kid, you used to think of women as emotional and men as kind of intellectual, you know. <laughs> this absolutely ridiculous scene in, in the movie The Shadowlands where where uh, Joy uh, is introduced to Christopher Tolkien uh, at the t actually it's called Christopher in the movie, but everyone knows it's actually Tolkien. Um, but the uh, uh, at the point he he says, I think of women as you know uh, I've, oh, how does it go? But emotional, they're emotional, and men are intellectual. And she says, Are you being stupid or? You know, what I, you know, and usually didn't talk to professors that way in a, a college gathering, right? So it was kind of fun, and, and um, oh, a, a good scene. In any case, um, um, today we don't think of, of, of emotional uh, as something separate from the experiences we're having from moment to moment. And James is leading in this direction that we're what we're we're looking at is this train or stream of consciousness, and every moment is this kind of an emotion. By the way, he's familiar with David Jung. Remember, David Jung gives us the, the only empirical uh, certainty you have at any one moment is what you're, you're, you're the phenomena that you're experiencing at that moment. Well, James is taking this and running with it, right? Well, that's our, our, our stream of consciousness. We have, we're constantly going through this, um, and it's also moods. These are our, our emotions, these are also our moods. Um, um, it's, it's really quite uh, a, a overwhelming new idea uh, at the time. Uh, people weren't thinking that way and it's, it's really uh, taking over. Uh, and the feeling of what happens, uh, he uh, does uh, all sorts of uh, um, scans of brains and, and, and you know, figuring out what the how the brain is reacting to all the different uh, experiences it's having, and so on. That's where our contemporary scientists are uh, today, in looking at that, the body and emotion in the making of consciousness. Uh, and there's there's others that are dealing with this. David Chalmers. who, he looked like this when he visited here. I don't know if you were here and, and remember it, but he was our, our guest speaker for our um, uh, undergraduate conference one year, uh, and that's how he looked. Now he looks more like this because he went from teaching in Australia where you could look like that, uh, and he had a, a you know, leather jacket and leather boots, you know, the whole business, 
Um, but now that he teaches at NYU, he looks more like this. In fact, I think he even wears a coat and tie occasionally. Uh, so he's transformed quite a lot. But David Chalmers is also uh, focused on the brain and uh, uh, how the, the mind and consciousness work. Uh, I especially enjoy his uh, attempt to understand the nature of virtual reality now that we have meta and, and meta quest and all of those new goggles that you can put on that give you a sense that there's a, a reality uh, to what you're doing and in fact the, the newest uh, goggles merge virtual reality with the room you're in right has anyone tried that oh uh, augmented reality 